I have been an entrepreneur for essentially my whole life. Throughout elementary and middle school, I had so many great experiences and learned so many valuable lessons throughout my journey. As I completed eighth grade, I was finishing my fifth year of my first business, Jack Stands and Marketplaces. At Jack Stands and Marketplaces, I sold young, young entrepreneurs' products, lemonade, iced tea, while teaching other kids how to operate those stands and marketplaces. I loved it, and I loved what I learned from it. But as I entered my freshman year of high school, I was ready to venture onto something new. And that was my second business, Teen Hustle. Teen Hustle is a last mile delivery service delivered 100% by teens on electric scooters and personal bikes, delivering uh, e-commerce packages, grocery items, and food from restaurants. Okay, so I'm entering my freshman year of high school, and I'm meeting up with a couple friends in the first week, some I had known, some that I didn't, and in an effort for us all to get to know each other, we start talking about our hobbies and the conversation is primarily dominated by sports. You know, one kid says what sport they do, everyone asks, oh, what position? Maybe they ask questions if they're unfamiliar with, um, with that sport, just normal teenage conversation. And then it got to me, and I brought up my entrepreneurial journey, and everyone around me was fascinated. They were asking so many questions like, how long have you been able to do this? Do you have fun anymore? How can you do this? as a student and as a kid. And it was these questions that truly showed the, the sense of impossibility of youth entrepreneurship for teens today because we're not exposed to these skills in school. And that's why I'm here today, to advocate and illuminate the world of youth entrepreneurship in schools. Okay, let's start with some statistics. Across the country, there are 7.4 million high schoolers involved in uh, high school sports versus less than 125,000 high schoolers in programs like DECA and FBLA, business and entrepreneurial clubs. We dedicate 45,000 coaches to high school sports and spend on average $100 billion across the country on sports and sporting events versus only 27 states even having entrepreneurship as a component of a required course to graduate. Let's go back to these 7.4 million teens. Of those 7.4 million teens, only 460,000 will actually go on to play sports at the college level. That's only 6%. From college to professional sports, only 9,200. That's only 2% of those playing at the college level. So think about it. We go from 7.4 million teenagers to only 9,200. That's a bit more than 0.1%. What about the rest of those kids? Aren't they going to need more skills than just knowing how to throw an 80 mile per hour fastball? So how do we settle this disparity between youth sports and youth entrepreneurship? I am by no means advocating for the dismantling of sports. I completely recognize that it has values and benefits, but it is crucial that we weigh those values and benefits with the values and benefits of youth entrepreneurship, as well as the resources we put to youth sports versus the resources we put to youth entrepreneurship. So, the question at the center of this all becomes, today, what skills do we want high schoolers to leave high school with and enter the adult world with? Well, let me tell you what I think. I think that first, we need to instill basic characteristics like perseverance, grit, critical problem solving, creativity, and confidence. Traits like these will help any student be successful in whatever professional discipline they might find themselves in. And let me give you a little example. When I was working on my first business, Jack Sands and Marketplaces, I was approached by Good Times, a frozen custard and burger chain um, who wanted my lemonade to be sold in their 36 locations. And th this, this was an amazing opportunity, something I had never experienced before. So we rented a commercial kitchen, I designed and perfected our all-natural uh, lemonade recipe, and we were ready for, uh, to produce our first batch. 
we got the approval of a couple lower level executives, but due to scheduling, we couldn't get the approval of a higher level executive, uh, and we were getting pushed up against their timeline. So we went ahead with the approval of the lower levels, and um, we produced our first batch. It was sent to, uh, sent to locations, specific locations for our trial run, and then we got our first complaint, and then a second, and then another, and the customers, they weren't used to our new all-natural lemonade versus what Good Times had previously been selling, which wasn't all-natural. So Good Times had to remove our lemonade from their stores and terminate the rest of the deal. And understandably, this was a kind of difficult time. Um, I had plans to use the funds that I would get from the deal to expand jack stands and marketplaces into new locations, but it had fallen through. And even though this was a tough experience, it taught me the very valuable lesson of having perseverance through hard times. If I hadn't learned this lesson, who knows where Jack Stands would have gone. But I knew that when one is faced with failure, they shouldn't give up. They should get back up and try again. Ultimately, that holiday season, I was able to have my stands and marketplaces in three mall locations across the Denver metro area. And to do so, I set about a dozen meetings with mall administration and general managers. I was able to present myself and my business with confidence and professionalism, and I believe that was what ultimately got my stands into those locations. The point of this example is that teenagers, as they exit high school, are gonna face situations similar in a professional setting where they need these entrepreneurial traits to be successful. Along with these intrinsic traits, I also think that we need to educate our students in real-world concrete skills like financial literacy, basic business competency, um, social skills in a professional setting with new people, and even the ability to create and manage their own schedule. Now, let me share a fascinating statistic with you. Only four out of seven Americans are financially literate. That's 57%. That number, and to be financially literate, is to be able to manage your personal finance, budgeting, and investing. That number dwindles down even further to 24% of millennials only understand basic financial topics. We cannot let our generation follow in these footsteps. We need to craft as many tools in our students' toolboxes that are applicable to the real world, and we need to teach our students to embrace life and all of the opportunities they co that come across their path with all that they can. So, where do we go from here? Well, first, let's reach out to these entrepreneurial organizations like DECA, FBLA, and Junior Achievement. Let's also reach out to our local business leaders and have them all in our schools to teach us these valuable entrepreneurial and business skills. Second, let's change the curriculum so that entrepreneurship and business are made required courses to graduate from high school, taught over year-long sessions with content that high schoolers will actually use as they leave high school. Imagine if we were able to dedicate the resources we dedicate to youth sports to youth entrepreneurship. How would that fundamentally change the nature of what high schoolers leave high school with? I personally have earned a black belt in karate, and I've participated in basketball, soccer, and baseball. But by no means would I be where I am today articulating this idea to you if it weren't for the skills and confidence I gained through youth entrepreneurship. We need to, as a society, embrace youth entrepreneurship and support it just as we support youth sports. One of my mottos is, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So why not make our students the luckiest they can be by equipping them with real-world preparation that will last their lifetime? Thank you.